Hi and welcome back to my channel. It is me, Germany. Oh my gosh, yes. Ah, it feels so good to be back. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the ways that I am adopting on how to love myself deeper. First thing first, in every relationship, think about loving yourself as getting into a relationship with yourself. Let's be a little psycho here. Let's think about it like that. When you're falling in love with somebody, the first thing you do is get to know that person before you fall in love with them. What I'm going to say is falling in love with yourself. Get to knowing yourself. Get to know who you are, what you like, your style, your passion. Like, yes, get into that depth, into knowing who you are. The first thing I'm actually using in order to get to know who I am is this book called A Journey Within, which you can find a lot of these self-love journals on Amazon. I actually got this in Walmart. You, you can have a lot of these self-love journals. You just don't need one. That's me. I think I have like two right now and I know this isn't going to be my last. So this one it says an introspective activity journal to help you get to know yourself better. And this helps especially when you don't know what to do. Like trust me, I did not know what to do. I honestly, when I thought about get to knowing yourself, it was just, I, how, how don't I know myself? <laughs> find yourself a good journal, <laughs> basically meant for you to find who you are. It's really good. And it gives you prompts and stuff and what to think about. And uh, it's a lot of pages, it is. Um, and it's really good. I love the things that ask you. Um, it's just come it come with quotes i i love this book other ways in finding who you are is also knowing what you like trying trends help you realize what you like i know a lot of people don't like the trying trends or you're trying to like fit in and all that stuff but i feel like that's a wonderful way to figure out what you like this is what i do if i like something i will keep it if i don't like the trend i will discard it and not try it again or i would tweak it to where I like it. That's honestly how you develop new styles and trends. You take something that's trending and then you just manipulate it to something that you like. So what I'm trying to say is, for instance, I really don't like wearing shirts that are very like, like this. This I love. I love this. I love the way it makes my arm look like I just love it. But there's some tops that are trending that I do not like. And what I do is just put a blazer on top and I love my blazers. Blazers are everything and you made it into one of your own. That's honestly what I'm saying. Just make it into something that you like and that's you. And take time to be alone and i know you're probably like why i hate being alone it's honestly that's me i hate being alone i i like it but then i hate it it's a you know thing but honestly i'm starting to love being alone because those are where my deepest thoughts come from yes i'm an overthinker but that's something on itself that i'm trying to fix as of right now but being alone is great and you don't just have to be alone like you know sit in a corner and be like i'm alone you can make dates for yourself like how you go on a date with somebody and you want to get to know that person take yourself on a date take yourself to starbucks a new restaurant that got opened um me personally i want to go to this cookie place um it's called crumble and i've been wanting to go there for the longest but i just haven't gotten out there just because one i'm a mom of four two and things haven't been occurring the way i want them and the reason why is just because i've been into an accident i have a fractured pelvis and i'm trying to heal so i can't really just up and go willy-nilly but i'm definitely gonna make it a priority to go to that cookie place because i heard it's really good can't do that prior prioritize your breakfast your meals that's a perfect way to be alone um find a cute little spot in your house a cute little spot outside have a little picnic outside i am terrified of bugs but i definitely want to do a little picnic outside um just to get away and 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 to absorb all the vitamin d outside because i heard vitamin d is the 
medicine for depression. It's also a way of romanticism. Romanticize your life. Like, honestly, that's the best way to have a long time. But if you're not a romantic person, I honestly just say just take a break and enjoy your breakfast in like a sunny area where you have light and just write write things down and get to know yourself get a journal that i had and that's what i honestly that's what i do i get a journal i'll sit down and just write either i'm at my desk or i'm at breakfast it's just one of the moments that i get as a mom of four that i can actually depend on make a you know bomb breakfast and or just eat breakfast i like oatmeal so i'll just make like an oatmeal and sit down and have my coffee i love coffee and um just start writing things down speak kindly please speak kindly to yourself treat yourself the same way you would treat somebody on the street or somebody that you don't know we are worthy to be nice to ourselves if that makes sense a lot of people do not understand that we we ourselves are our worst enemies and we determine our self-worth and i feel like that's not talked about enough a lot of times we determine our self-worth for things that i think just don't make sense like it just don't like just because i have a pimple on my face my self-worth go down no it's normal to have a pimple on your face it's called life it's called life we all have osmosis in our body that's gonna cause this pimple on our face like it's 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 ridiculous speak positivity to yourself affirmations i'm a big believer in that i actually have an app and it's called i am i will put that also up there so you can download it so it can help you out um yes it's called i am and it wakes me up and it basically has an affirmation affirmation on my phone and also you don't even need a fancy affirmation you can just be like i am beautiful or like, for instance, I'm going to be very transparent right now. Um, getting, I have a mirror in front of my shower when I get out. Basically, just a basic mirror on my shower, on my sink. So when I get into the shower, I see my body in a hole. And sometimes I stare at it and I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, it's not, like, it just, I'll just say mean and negative things to myself about my body. And then I just have to reverse it and be like, no, this body carried four kids, had an ectopic pregnancy in between those four kids and survived it all. And C-sections for three. This body is dope. The same way that you'll see someone on the street and they be like downing themselves because they feel like they're not worth your compliment of them saying, of you saying, you know, positive things to them. It's the same way it's what you're doing to yourself like accept the positivity that you're giving to yourself so speak positivity to your life be speak positivity to your body anything you're doing because speaking positive to yourself strengthens your heart in so many ways your mortality you're strengthening your mortality um which means living and um I feel like a lot of people don't understand that and the more negative self-talk you feel to yourself you're basically causing you're basically causing the havoc onto your body and that's not strengthening your heart which is doing the opposite of mortality and mortality right comparison we need to stop comparing ourselves to somebody like we are who we are for a reason and that should be enough um being who we are should be enough and um Loving yourself is one of the parts that help you stop comparing yourself. Think about it like this. I feel like comparison can come in so many ways. It can come within family. It can come within social media. It can come within um, comparing yourself to the old you that you can't, you know, I like the old, okay, so that's very contradicting. So, like, comparing yourself to the old you, say if your old you was really bad, yeah, you can do that. You can pat yourself on the back, pat yourself on the back and be like, yes, that was the old me, this is the new me, and I'm loving her. That's basically, I guess, that would be positivity. But if you're comparing yourself, such as moms nowadays, like moms like me, um, I would definitely see these pictures, high school pictures of myself, and be like, oh my god. 
realize what happened to me like what happened to me and it's and what happened to me is i had kids i grew up i got thick and my husband always get on to me all the time about that because he he grew with me i met him when i was 16 years old and honestly he's my best friend um i grew up with him since i was honestly let's scratch that 15 um and he grew with me literally um and he always tell me how beautiful i am but he don't see me as changing he don't see that i change unless i show him a picture and be like little babe look at this look at this picture he don't see that i change and honestly i feel like that's true love and that's what we need to give to ourselves we need to give that unconditional love to ourselves that's like hey you know you only see you you don't see the changes in yourself and that physical changes in yourself and i feel like that's what we need to do is basically love ourselves unconditionally where we see those changes and we're like wow that's the old that you know understand that's the old you and understand this is the new you and the things that you're going through i i'm gonna be honest with you i'm never gonna be a i don't want to be a size six because I'm loving who I am now. Now, do I want to be healthy? Yes, I want to be healthy, but I don't want to be unhealthy by making my life. I don't want to be healthy by making my life toxic. There, there's no benefit to you being negative to yourself. There's no health benefit to that. There's no mental benefit to that. And I feel like in life, you should want to do things that are beneficial to yourself. Listening to triggers, that's honestly where it's at when you wanna start loving yourself because we're talking about all the good, fun things, loving yourself, treating yourself, going out, with you know, going out on your own, you know, loving on yourself. But let's talk about the problems that come when you're triggered. Depression, anxiety, overthinking. Um, yes, very negative things. I'm slowly understanding my triggers and I'm accepting the feelings that they're giving me. And honestly, that's one of the things that I am learning also is accepting the feelings that the triggers cause me and understanding that it's okay. It's we're not we're not perfect. So understanding triggers is something you can is also fall it also falls underneath getting to know who you are because you need to know what makes you upset. You're not gonna get into a relationship with somebody and be like, I just wanna know what makes you happy. You know, you need to know what makes that person happy and also what makes that person upset so you can honestly know what you're consciously doing. I get very triggered when things are overwhelming, um, when I'm stressed, um, when I feel like I'm in fight or flight sometimes, or when I feel like I am not in control in my life. Cause I felt like I was controlled a lot of times due to my mind. I felt like I was very much controlled in my head uh, of what things should be, what things should look like, how I should be. Um, and I feel like those are my triggers. So when I feel like those triggers are being done, like when I'm being triggered, I learned how to embrace that i am gonna cry because i'm a crier i'm very emotional <laughs> you know growing up i was told like big girls don't cry stop being a cry baby and it's okay to cry as long as you know where your end goal is get to it get back to it and that's how i am i will cry it out and i will go back after what i want or what i need to do it's more of a reset button like whatever your reset is do it you're going to be triggered in this world. There's a lot of things that are going to be triggering. But the one thing you can also say for helping with triggers is try to find peace. And what I mean is try to find peace with things that you like, your passion. Discard this. I know that sounds so bad, but slowly fall back from people or things that are taking away your peace. And I can definitely make a video on that um, because it's very much a meaty subject <laughs> about finding your peace. But definitely 
to uh, decrease your triggers is definitely stepping away from things that are not giving you peace. The last thing I'm going to say is finding resources to build yourself up and to finding who you are. Listen to TED Talks. TED Talks. <laughs> Listen to TED Talks, find resources um, on building self-esteem because loving yourself is self-esteem. Um, self-esteem is totally different from confidence and um, I've got a lot of resources that I can share with you. Um, there's a book called The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. I listen to Audible. I don't have time to really read because I'm always on the move with kids and stuff. And um, let me see. Yes, it is called... The, it's called Modern Modern Etiquette Made Easy by Micah Meyer. And um, it's a five-step method to mastering etiquette. Now, don't come for me because I'm not trying to be all bourgeois. But etiquette is definitely a key to confidence. And I did not know that. Etiquette isn't just about, you know, cutlery and... What's that on the floor? Cutlery and know where to put things is not just that. It's so much more. Self-esteem just means basically you're enjoying your existence. And oh my gosh, once you start enjoying your existence, I swear it's a natural high that you can never get enough of. But that's all I'm going to talk about today. If you haven't already, please um, subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.